Good morning. It is so good to be with you this morning and to be wrapping up our final week on the story of Noah's Ark. In the past several weeks, we've been looking at this story, but with a focus on God. Where is God in this story? What is he feeling? Why does he do certain things? What can we learn about our creator from this grand story? And this week, we're finishing off with talking about God's final promise to Noah. It's the promise that he gives alongside that rainbow in the sky. But before we jump into it, you're going to be able to watch uh, the story in pictures this morning. There's not going to be any words. And I hope that, you know, we've heard the story enough times where you can imagine the words that go with these different pictures of the Noah's Ark story. But before that, I want to pray with you. So will you pray? God, Thank you for your word. Thank you for making yourself known to us through these different stories, for showing us who you are, God. And at the core of it all, your love. Your love that it's really hard to wrap our brains around the love that you have for us and your creation, God. But in reading this story and in, in getting ourselves into your word, God, I, I pray that you've given everyone watching just a little glimpse of that love. A little taste of how good you are. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Let's jump right into it. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my I'd be a fool You were my all in all Jesus Lamb of God What is your name? Jesus Jesus, love. 
Okay, here we are. We've reached the end of the story. We've come through God's sadness and his mercy in choosing Noah to rebuild his creation. We've seen him give detailed instructions to Noah and giving Noah and his family a safe place to reside as the flood goes on. We've seen God bring down rain for 40 days and 40 nights in order to clean out the dirtiness that had corrupted his creation. And we've seen God remember Noah and his family. And this week, we're going to look at God's promise, his final promise to Noah. And that promise is that God would never again flood the earth. He would never again bring the waters from heaven to submerge the entire earth. And in his sweetness, he wanted to remind us of that promise by putting a rainbow in the sky after it rains. And every time that we see that rainbow, we remember God's promise to Noah that he'll never again flood the earth. But if we understand that God was flooding the earth in order to clean out the dirtiness and so that he could rebuild his creation and make the world, what he wanted it to be from the very beginning, how is he going to do that if he's, if he's promising to not flood the earth again? Because we all know that there is still brokenness in this world. That God's creation is in some ways still falling apart. So how is he going to rebuild if he can't flood it again? And that brings us back to the waters. That brings us back to the waters that come to submerge, to purify, and to bring new life. Because God promised to not do it to the entire world, but he says he wants you, he wants every individual to be submerged under his waters, to be purified of the dirtiness so that he can bring you life. He wants that for us individually. And that's how he plans to continue to rebuild this creation is through us individually, by making a new life through our brokenness. And so God's promise is not just he's not going to flood the earth, but God's promise is that he will continue to rebuild what he had started to rebuild on top of Noah. He will continue to rebuild and he's going to use us in order to do it. That we, just like Noah, get to come alongside God and help him in rebuilding his creation. And he promises that if you trust him enough to be submerged under the waters that he will bring you out so that you can have new life, just like he did with the entire world. That new life will come after the flood. And so that promise is a promise of hope and a promise of us being able to be a part of his plan. That he will no longer need to flood the whole earth because he will use all of us in order to rebuild this creation, his creation. And so as we look back at the story, I want you to remind yourself of what you've learned about who God is from the story of Noah's Ark. You see, our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it. And when he saw that it was broken, he was sad. His heart broke. He was deeply troubled. 
It was a sadness that came from a place of big love for his creation. And instead of just pushing it aside, forgetting about what he had created, he decides to rebuild his creation using the pieces that he can salvage, using the pieces that are us. He uses those pieces and in his mercy, he begins to rebuild creation. And in rebuilding creation, he always provides. He provided Noah with what Noah needed in order to be a part of the plan. And he'll provide you with what you need in order to be a part of his plan. And in, after all the provision, right, God purifies. He cleans out the dirtiness. It's something that he did during the flood and something that he continues to do in all of our lives. And he's trustworthy. We can always trust that God will remember that even after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, even when it seems like the rain will not stop, God remembers. And he's promised. He's promised us that he would never flood the earth again. And he's also promised us that there will be new creation and it will be exactly what he wanted it to be so we need to trust him we need to remember all the times that he's come through on all of the promises he's ever made and then we need to know that the same will be true for this final promise mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the spirit set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hand for i will always sing of when your love came down i could sing of your love forever i could sing of your sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever over the mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the spirit set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands for I will always sing of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 feel like dancing it's foolishness I know when the world has seen the light they will dance with joy like we're dancing now I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love sing of your love forever I could 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 sing of your love forever. Thank you so much for being with me, not only this morning, but the past several mornings where we've talked about the story of Noah's Ark and, and focused specifically on, on where God is in this story. I hope that every time you come upon this story, you remember 
something from one of the mornings that we've spent together talking about Noah and his ark. But uh, this will be it. Um, the summer is now over and you are all preparing to go back to school. And so I hope that you have the final few days of summer, everything that you've imagined, and you can spend some time outside enjoying the sun and eating some ice cream. But I would really like to close this out in prayer. So will you pray with me? God, you are so, so, so good. You're good in every way, in everything that you do, in every breath that you breathe. God, you are so good. It's too big to even really understand how good you are, God. But I pray that in all of our lives, you give us moments where we can taste and see your goodness, where your goodness is so real in our lives that it draws us closer to you. God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this time that we've been able to spend together digging into your word. I pray that the seeds that were planted over the past several weeks, that you will bring new life out of them. I pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. Love you and miss you all.